Hi guys, this is Vineet and in, and in today's video we will talk about MSDB database in SQL Server. Before we proceed ahead, I would request you guys to please go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, subscribing gives us huge motivation to create new videos for you and for other SQL professionals. So please subscribe. There's a subscribe button below this video. Click on that subscribe button, you will get a bell icon. Click on that bell icon, select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos. If you take a look at the screenshot here, right now I have uh, around 323 subscribers with around 132 published videos. And I want the subscriber count to reach somewhere around 500. So need your help here guys. Uh, please help us here in reaching the required subs uh, subscriber count. And on the right hand side if you see, uh, we have a screenshot where which indicates basically out of 100 users only 4% of users subscribe to our channel. So out of uh, 100 users that are watching our videos only 4% are subscribing to our channel. So please subscribe. Uh, there's also an animation given uh, for subscription. So this is how you subscribe. You click on the subscribe button, you click on the bell icon and yeah, you get select all notifications to get uh, the notifications regarding my upcoming videos before we proceed ahead uh, there are a few points to remember as well I would request you guys to please watch this uh, video till the end to gain better clarity of the concept and if possible for you please watch this video twice perform any exercises mentioned in your in the video uh, only in your test and lab environments do not touch any production or environments or production databases and we would like to know your thoughts regarding our videos so please share your comments as well with us in case you need the pdf copy of the notes which i am discussing in the video you can uh, do that so by paying a nominal fee uh, by going to the link below i have also included this link in the description so you can check that out and download the notes apart from that i have uh, some playlists to watch so first is the database design playlist which has around uh, more than 35 videos and another playlist is also there which is business continuity playlist which has around more than uh, 45 videos so these you video playlists are very useful for you uh, you may start with the database design playlist and later on watch the business continuity playlist links are included in the video description as well so you can uh, copy and paste that link from there as well and apart from that i have a channel page which is youtube.com slash at the red sql talks by beneath you can check that channel page link as well uh, on there uh, you will also get the subscribe button uh, you may click on that uh, there as well now if you have any questions related to sql server you may ask them so by paying a nominal fee of 500 uh, for a single question at the below link this link is also included in the description area of this video and also if you need help in writing a profile while preparing your resume uh, I am available for consultation with an hourly charge of INR 1000 and you may avail this service by going to the link below and this link is also included in the description. Let's come back to the today's topic which is MSDB database in SQL Server so let's quickly go to my notes. Uh, sorry I need to go to notes so the, these are the notes. Let me select the pen pointer quickly. So today we are discussing about the MSDB database, which is particularly this database. Uh, let me close this out. Uh, MSDB is a system database. So this one I'm talking about. So today we are discussing about this MSDB database. So let's begin. The MSDB database is used by SQL Server agent. So in SQL Server, we have SQL Server Agent, uh, which is basically used for scheduling any jobs. Uh, we can uh, schedule jobs inside Job Activity Monitor. So the MSDB database is used by SQL Server Agent for scheduling alerts and jobs and other features like database email. So whatever information is there for jobs is stored inside the MSDB database. Uh, SQL Server agent uses this database to store that information regarding scheduled alerts and jobs and other features like database email. And for example, if we take SQL Server automatically maintains a complete online backup and restore history within the tables in MSDB. So SQL Server also stored the backup and restore history in the MSDB tables as well. So MSDB have uh, some tables 
under which the backup history is stored. So it has some system tables uh, like the backup set, backup media set. So these are the table where the backup history is stored. Backup file, backup file group, backup media family, backup media set and backup set. These are some of the backup tables used for uh, storing the system backups, uh, system backup information basically. So, so backup and restore history is stored within the tables in MSDB and this includes the name of the party that performed the backup, the time of the backup and the devices or files uh, that were backed up is stored. Uh, or the files where the backup is stored. So the backup history information includes the history information like name of the party, uh, who performed the backup, uh, the time uh, the backup was taken, and any devices or file where the backup is uh, stored. And uh, SQL Server Management Studio uses uh, basically uses this information to propose a plan for restoring a database. So when we perform a restore, uh, the SQL Server Management Studio queries this database to find out the information uh, regarding what should be the restore plan, uh, what should be the restore sequence basically, the full database backup, differential backups and any other log, transaction log backups that have to be restored. So that information comes out of the MSDB database, table stored in MSDB database. So yeah, SQL Server Management Studio uses this information the backup and restore information and it basically uses that information to propose a plan for restoring a database and applying any transaction log backups now backup events for all the databases are recorded so any of the databases which are backed up uh, the events for all those databases are recorded in this database even if they were created with custom applications. So even if we are, we are using some outside application, outside of SQL Server application that is used to take backup, even then as well, all the backup events for all the databases are recorded, in even in the case of custom applications or any third party tools. For example, uh, if we use a Microsoft VB or Visual Basic application that calls the SQL Server management objects or SMO API to perform backup operations, the event is logged in the MSDB system tables. The Microsoft Windows application log as well, uh, the events are logged in Microsoft Windows application log as well apart from the MSDB system tables and the events are also logged in error logs as well in case there are any, any errors during the backup. In order to protect the information that is stored in MSDB, so in order to store the information, the backup information and any other information that is stored in MSDB, recommendation is that you consider placing a MSDB transaction log on a fault tolerant storage. So it's a recommendation that uh, the transaction log for the MSDB database should be on a fault tolerant storage, uh, possibly a weight storage, because uh, this database uh, keeps track of the important information like backup and restore information and information about any jobs configured in the system, any alerts configured in the system. Now by default, MSDB uses the simple recovery model. So let's check the recovery model of the database, uh, MSDB, go to properties of this database and under the option section you will find the recovery model. So by default it uses the simple recovery model which is mentioned over here. Okay, so by default it uses the simple recovery model. If you use the backup and restore strategy or if you use the backup and restore history tables, the recommendation is to use the full recovery model. So if we are doing any backups and restores on this system, then yeah, and if we are keeping track of backup and restore history information in the MSDB tables, we should change its uh, recovery model to full recovery model. So recovery model can be changed like this. You go to properties and go to options and change the recovery model from uh, simple to full as we are doing backups on the system. So yeah, definitely the model should be set to full. And let's come back to notes. When the SQL Server is installed, so whenever we install SQL Server or even if we upgrade the SQL Server and when the, when, whenever the setup.exe of SQL Server is used to rebuild the system databases, 
the recovery model of MSDB uh, database is automatically set to simple. So in case of upgraded, sometimes the database gets upgraded, the MSDB database gets upgraded. So in those cases, the recovery model is set back to simple. Uh, and if we, we are doing some, uh, if we are keeping track of backup and restore history information, we should change back the recovery model to full. We have just shown you how to change the recovery model. And after any operation that updates the MSDB, such as backing up or restoring any database. So whenever we do any backup and restore of any of the databases, recommendation is to backup the MSDB database. So we should immediately backup the MSDB database after that. Even what I would say is we should have a maintenance plan um, to take database backups for MSDB database, maybe once daily or once after once after every six hours, uh, that would suffice the purpose. Now let me take you through a demo of walkthrough uh, of MSDB file properties. Let's check the MSDB file properties. Go to properties for MSDB database and go to the file section. So it has two files. First one is the MSDB data file. And the physical file name is msdb uh, msdb data dot mdf and the log file msdb log the physical file name is msdb log dot ldf uh, the msdb data is created on primary file group log uh, does file groups does not apply to log files and initial size is given 17 and 18 um, the files were uh, created with an initial size of 17 mb the primary data file and the log file was created with an initial size of 18 mb auto growth settings are uh, 10% for each log and data file and uh, for data it's unlimited uh, until the disk is full. For log file it's restricted to uh, 2 TB I think or 2 gigs I think. So yeah uh, that is what the situation is. Uh, so we have shown you uh, what is the file size uh, so this is two terabytes basically. So it can auto grow up to maximum of the log file can auto grow up to maximum up to two terabytes. So it's restricted till two terabytes. Whereas for primary data file there are no restrictions. Now uh, let's go back to notes. So we have done through the walkthrough of uh, MSDB file properties. Now let's talk about some restrictions. So following operations cannot be performed on the MSDB database and this operation includes uh, changing the collation of the database. The default collation is the server collation. We cannot drop this MSDB database. We cannot drop the guest user from this particular MSDB database. We cannot enable data change capture. This database cannot participate in database mirroring operations. Uh, removing the primary file group is not allowed on this database. Primary data file cannot be removed or log file cannot be removed as well. We cannot rename this database or the primary file group of this database. Uh, we cannot set this database to offline. Setting the primary file group to read only is not allowed for this database. There are some recommendations while working with the MSDB database as well. So when you work with the MSDB database, uh, we should consider the following uh, recommendations. Always have a current backup of MSDB available. So we should have a backup uh, strategy uh, established for MSDB databases, uh, maybe via maintenance plans. We will create a video on maintenance plans later on, so stay in touch with us. Now backup the MSDB database as soon as possible after the following operations are performed. So what are those operations? If we are creating, modifying or deleting any jobs, alerts, proxies or any maintenance plans, then the back, uh, we should uh, back up the MSDB database immediately after that. If we are creating any, creating, modifying or deleting any jobs, alerts or proxies or any of the maintenance plans, yeah, we should back up the MSDB database immediately. If we are adding, changing or deleting database mail profiles, then yeah, the MSDB database should be backed up immediately. If we are adding, modifying, adding, modifying or uh, deleting policy based management policies then you have this msdb database should be backed up and we should not create any user objects in msdb database in case you do the msdb database must be backed up more frequently uh, treat the msdb database as highly sensitive and do not grant access to anyone without a proper need so this is a highly sensitive database and we should not grant access to anyone without a proper need so access for this database should not be granted to anyone. 
Especially, we need to keep in mind that uh, SQL Server agent jobs are often owned by the members of the sysadmin role. So, SQL Server job, if we talk about, though the owner of those jobs are generally the sysadmin role uh, people. And therefore, we need to make sure that code that is executed within the job cannot be tampered with. So, we should be uh, certain the, uh, certain about uh, whether we should not be giving uh, permissions to MSDB database to unnecessary people. Only sysadmin profile people have these uh, permissions on the MSDB database. And we should also audit any changes to objects in MSDB so that uh, we can keep a track of who has made what changes to the to any of the objects inside the MSDB database. So auditing can be enabled. We'll talk about auditing in our later videos, so please uh, stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, there's a subscribe button below. Click on that button. There are many more videos coming in. So, guys, we are done with this video. Today, we have discussed about the MSDB database. We have provided you an over DB, uh, overview of MSDB database, and apart from that, we have taken you through a walkthrough of MSDB file properties. We have shown you how you can change the recovery model of the MSDB database. We have talked about restrictions on the MSDB database. You can go through this list once more, although we have discussed it. And uh, there are some recommendations regarding working with MSDB databases, so you need to follow those recommendations. Alright, guys, we are done. I thank you so much for your time on this video today. Please. Uh, post your comments on this video uh, please click on the like button if you really like this video and please also share this video with your friends in case you feel this video is very useful for them and also please ask your friend to subscribe to my channel there's a subscribe button below this video click on that button you will get a bell icon click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos thank you once again for your time on this video today and you have a nice day ahead